Welcome back to the GTN show brought to you by Zwift and literally from Zwift this week because <laughs> we are delighted to be in the Zwift pad ahead of the Ironman World Championships here in Kona. Yeah, no, we have got a really exciting show for you this week. We're going to be bringing you a preview of the Ironman World Championships as well as some very insightful thoughts from Bob Babbitt. We're also going to be taking a look around this setup here at Zwift. We're going to be talking to the Zwift Academy triathlon team as well as chatting to Tim Don. And that's not all either, because we have a very exciting giveaway coming from Cask, and we have some real footage of that collab between Physique and Ventum that we discussed last week. And I told you this was going to be a good show, Mark, because we also have Indy 500 winner and Indy Car Series champion Tony Canan joining us for a little showdown on Zwift. <laughs> Okay, Fraser, we are just a few days away from one of the biggest, if not the biggest race within the triathlon calendar, the Ironman World Championships. Yeah, Mark, now it all kicks off this Saturday in Kailua Bay here on the island of Kona, Hawaii. 6.25 in the morning, the pro men are gonna get things started. Five minutes later, the pro women start, and then at 6.55, the age group waves start. But this year, for the first time ever, not in a mass start format. In fact, the whole field will be split them to 11 separate groups. Yeah, well, let's take a quick look through the course mm. that these athletes are going to be undertaking because it's pretty hard. Now, it's going to start off obviously with a 3.8 kilometer swim, and it's a deep water start for this swim. It's pretty much a very simple out and back within the sea. Um, and it's really a great opportunity for the athletes to split the field up, as we've seen Lucy Charles Barkley doing in the past. Yeah, that's certainly something that happens in the women's race, and in fact, each year there's a swim practice race that takes place here on the island the week beforehand and it's really just a great chance for a lot of the pros to get involved and all the age groupers if they're racing to well just flex their muscles a little bit and also get used to the course and we saw that exact thing with newbie to this race course Alistair Brownlee giving that a little bit of a test run he pushed on hard and there was five athletes came some three minutes ahead of the bulk of that swim race Alistair managed to get the line kicking on just in front of other uber swimmer Josh Amber from Australia. So yeah, we could definitely see those two athletes really stringing the field out, if not maybe breaking the field up, probably along with a couple more athletes that didn't do the swim practice race. But now onto the bike course, 180 k's within the furnace of the lava fields. Now it's pretty much just a one lap bike and out and back to the turn point at Harvey. Yeah, and it is actually this section of the course that can start to split the race up as they climb up to that turn point in Harvey, not to mention the crazy speeds that some of those athletes can hit with the winds that blow them back down off of that descent. And in fact, if you do want to learn a little bit more about that section of the course, we have actually just put a video out that talks about some decisive parts of the Ironman course. Yeah, you can see that, well, we'll throw to it at the end of this uh, show, actually. And then after that, we're on to just a nice casual 42.2 kilometer <laughs> run within the afternoon sun and humidity. And me and Fraser have been going out for a little jog yeah. in the morning and the evening. And I can tell you, even then it's, <laughs> It's pretty tough. Now, Fraser, you've actually raced here well, a couple of times before. How does it feel getting onto that run in that sort of heat? Yeah, Mark, to be honest, it is that energy lab that just breaks so many athletes, me included, the couple of times I was lucky to be here. It's just like, well, it's like a cauldron of heat in there. And to be honest, I never managed to cope with that. A lot of athletes completely crumble in there, but there are plenty of athletes that strive and do so well in there. Not to mention David McNamee, third place in the last two times he's been on the island. And of course, defending champion Patrick Langer, he seems to be able to do some damage in there, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. Well, on that note, we ought to sort of catch up and discuss those athletes that might do well. And who better to talk to than Bob Babbitt? Well, what I think the main thing is we're going to have People haven't heard this yet, but Fraser Carpmel has got his application in <laughs> and yeah. will be racing. And I've heard Alistair Brownlee and Jan Ferdano and Patrick Lange are all very, very concerned that you're racing on, on Saturday and you might be taking them down. I'm, I'm, imagine, yeah. <laughs> now, the main thing about, might fly. The main thing about this race is that if you took this race and put it in a bubble, you could figure out, okay, who's the fastest swim, bike, and run. Yeah. But the fact that you've got the heat and you win and the pressure Everybody is here to win this race, to change. You can change your life by finishing top three, top five mm -hmm. in this race. 
So knowing that, and knowing that you've got Patrick Lange and Alistair Brownlee for the first time, and Jan Frodeno, and oh, by the way, Cam Worth just ran a 245 marathon off the bike in, to win Ironman Italy, and uh, Sebastian Keenle, who had the second fastest run of the day at Ironman Nice, outran Alistair, yeah. outran Bart Arnott's, and don't forget Bart Arnott's and David McNamee. The, the men's weight race is so stacked that who knows who's going to win the thing, and which makes it so much fun. 2010, if I asked you who's going to win the women's race, you'd be like, oh, Chrissy Wellington. She's uh, won 2007, 8, and 9. She's going to win her fourth in a row. She doesn't start the race. She's sick. So when people say, who do you predict? I'm like, well, let's see who gets to the starting line. Let's see who's healthy at the starting line, because nobody's telling us, oh, by the way, I've got a sore Achilles. And we didn't mention the women's side of things. You got Daniela Reef, who's looking to win her fifth in a row here, right? Or her fifth win here. Exactly. And then you've got uh, Lucy Charles, who gets better and better and better. And what yep. I love about Lucy is she still has kept her Ironman racing to a minimum. Mm -hmm. People have a tendency to do too many of these races and kill themselves. And she's also improved her running gradually. She hasn't tried to rush into it. Same with Cam Worth. He's going, listen, I feel my run is a weapon. I feel I can run with anybody. And after ah, his 245, of course, that's Italy. That's not Kona. No. And he's a big guy. But it still gives him confidence. And does that change the way, if he goes past Jan Frodeno early in the bike ride mm -hmm. and is out leading, does Jan feel like, I can't give him five minutes or 10 minutes because I can't let him have that big a gap because I don't know if I can run him down. They're not going to go, uh, we're not going to let him go now. There's not any way they're going to change the way they race or the way they can race. It's not like all of a sudden he's become that much of a better cyclist in two weeks because Cam Worth goes by it. Now, one thing I would like to ask you about are um, wild cards, I suppose, yes. that have never raced here before. So two that spring to mind for me, on the women's side are Laura Phillips from Germany yep. and on the men's side, Cody Beals from Canada. Now, these yes. are athletes that are fantastic, uh, their resumes are incredible, um, and well, we don't know what their capabilities are here because they've got no form. Right. Well, see, what's great about Cody is he's knocked off Lionel two years in a row yep. at Mont Blanc. And uh, Laura is, you know, just one of those, uh, I think she had the fastest premium for debut, debut, debut Ironman Iron Iron of all time. Yep. So you, those are the folks you look at. The other debut, which you, you don't think that much about, is Alistair Brownlee. Uh -huh. I mean, you think about what happened last year at South Africa where Jan Ferdinand ran a 106 half marathon, Brownlee ran a 107, and Javier Gomez one ran away. a 108. Yeah. Now, what happened from that was Jan was hurt his hip. Alistair, the rest of the season, was pretty toasted. Javier got passed here in the run by Cam Worth. Uh, and nothing wrong with Cam Worth passing you, but Javier Gomez. Not what we'd have expected. Not what you expected. Yes. So I think that race took a ton out of them. But if you're looking at, at this year and you're looking at those guys, I, I, I look Alistair. I don't think anybody's saying that this first time guy can't win because he can. Well, I think we've got an awful lot to look forward to this coming weekend race day, don't we, Bob? So we'll certainly be here. We can't wait to watch the racing unfold, and maybe we can chat about it afterwards and see if we were right. Exactly, and again, I think everybody out there better be watching, because Frazier, he, he's trying to keep it low-key. He has signed up, he is racing, and everybody else is really worried. Right, well, we should probably do our own predictions, hey, Fraser? So Nail our colours to the mask. Quickly, men's and women's top three. Right, I'm going to go for Jan Frenin, who's back in the island. He's my pick for the win. I think Patrick will do very well again, but he's not going to get that win. He is my second place. And I'm going to put Alistair Brownlee in there as third. On the what, women's... What about Dave McNamee? Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> um, on the women's race, I'm going to say Daniela Reeves can't be beaten. <sighs> Seems a bit boring saying the same as last year, but again, I think Lucy Charles will hang on to that second place because she is just a fantastic athlete, and I'll put third place in there as Laura Phillip. Mm, okay, well, rather than doing a top three, I'm going to do a couple of wild yeah, cards, okay? Yeah, yeah. So I actually think on the men's side... Can we, we put David back in as a wild card? <laughs> <laughs> Can, well, he's on the podium last year. I'm going to say Andy Bockerer. Yes. Uh, back racing and incredible performances this year. Pretty good on the swim, incredible on the bike. Don't know if he can hold it together for the run. Well, he had a bad day out in Frankfurt, but we'll let that go. And we'll, yeah. Cam Worth, it's not really a wild card, but yeah, it's a, I, I, it's a problem with the streets. There's far too many people. And um, yeah, and then on the women's side, oh, I mean, they're not really wild cards, but Sarah Crowley could be an interesting. Been one. Been on the podium she, here before. Yeah, and finally, I'm going to throw in Imogen Simmons. What a year she has had. Yeah, we're going to get hammered here, but I, we didn't even mention Sebastian Keenley. We are just... 
<laughs> <There's> so, <laughs> there, there are so many names we didn't mention though, Fraser. But oh, obviously dear. do let us know what you think in the comment section below. I mean, all the athletes yeah. here are phenomenal and they yeah. all within their own right could yeah, do exactly. something incredible here. Um, now, something we haven't discussed yet is the records. Mm. Now, obviously last year was just exceptional. We had Patrick Langer breaking the overall course record, Daniel Arif breaking the overall course record. Camworth got the bike record. Daniel Arif got the bike record. <laughs> yeah, and Siverson broke the swim course record from the age group race. And Lucy Charles obviously broke the swim course record. Now, obviously, these were all incredible performances, but I'm going to put out there, it was a pretty ideal day. Apparently, they, it was just, well, I wasn't here, you were. Yeah, a lot of people were saying it was the perfect day, perfect conditions. Um, so surely it's got to be hard to beat those. But we're going to throw this to you guys do you think any records could be broken this year simple yes, yes or, or no no exactly any record just enter that by clicking just up here but now fraser you've got something to get on with oh god so i do right see yeah. me soon guys so i've just left mark to it because I'm going to meet indy 500 driver tony canan who i've just heard pull up in the driveway so we've got a little zwift set up here for a head-to-head -head between us so i'm going to go see where he is Right on. Well, now for some try news, and we have just heard that Sarah Haskins has retired from triathlon. Now, she has had an incredible career. She went to the 2000 Olympic Games. She was silver medalist at the ITU World Champs, and she has had oh, probably 50 plus wins within draft legal and non-drafting racing. She's been in the sport for a good 15 years, but now she has announced her retirement and time to focus on her family. So that chapter is closed and on to the next, so exciting times for her. Something not quite so exciting or good news is that Terenzo Bazzoni has pulled out of the Ironman World Championships here in Kona this weekend. He actually spent a good month out here on the island prepping. He went home back to New Zealand just for time with his family to then pop back out to the race, but he will not be coming back because he has a flared up Achilles. Now he's posted up on Instagram a little message saying, I have some frustrating news. I won't be traveling to Kona this week to race in the Ironman World Championship due to an Achilles injury, which is on the mend. Now we are, well, really sorry to hear that, but we do hope that your Achilles mends as quickly as possible. Now, if you've been keeping track of the Zwift Academy triathlon team this year, you will have seen just how well those athletes have been looked after. Just look at that bike, for example. And you're probably watching this thinking, oh, I want a bit of that. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that the 2020 sign-up process has begun. If you're interested, you can find the link in the description below this video to get yourself signed up. That process is running between November through to January with athletes being selected in February. This year, it's gonna be six athletes all geared towards the Ironman World Championships. And if you are one of those six lucky athletes, you'll not only get receive cutting edge gear, you also get mentorship from some of the best pros in the world and loads more. Now for yourself to be selected, you need to get involved in six bike workouts and one bike race, four run workouts and one running race. But now it's about time we checked in with the current roster of athletes in the lead up to the 2019 Ironman World Champs and someone that's got to know them pretty well, Tim Don. Super chuffed to be here with the, the class of 2019, the Zwift Specialized Academy in Kona, Hawaii. Got some amazing athletes this year. Um, got young Justin, who's 23. Um, you know, he had an amazing race at Bolton, won his first Ironman age group. I think he's going to have a good, good run here. Levi from Australia and Philip, 819. Can you believe that time he did at Copenhagen Ironman this year? They're in the same age group, they're going to be duking it out. Um, hope they don't self-implode and kill each other out there, but um, no, they've both been training hard, so I'm excited to see how they do. And we've got Grandpa, as we call him, Paul Lunn, um, uh, um, flying the British flag. Um, very experienced athlete, amazing runner, um, you know, and he's looking for the top step of the podium this year. On the women's side, we've got Ruth, uh, phenomenal athlete, um, very experienced, broken collarbone this year and she still come back, uh, I think it was about seven or eight weeks after she broke it and had it pinned. She was rocking Nice World Champs. Um, she looks in great shape. I think the rest could have actually done her, done her some good leading up to this race. Um, she was second amateur overall last year in Kona. So I think, again, she's fighting for that top step. We've got Natia. She's podiumed in every Ironman she's done, yet never qualified for Kona. That is brutal. So to see her finally qualify here 
is phenomenal. And again, with that pedigree, um, her parents have both podiumed at Comrades Marathon in South Africa. Um, I think she's going to be, a, she's a, such a compact runner. I think she's going to do uh, very well here. We've got Yvonne. In, um, she's a phenomenal athlete. To come out of her comfort, comfort zone, um, she is, um, she could be, she's, she's uh, um, more mature than, than some of the younger guys. And to go to Morgan Hill with those young guys, um, you know, I've got so much respect for her. Um, she's um, been struggling with a little injury in her foot, but she's been aqua jogging two and a half hours. <laughs> Crazy, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming good for her, so I hope she has a good race as well. And then we've got Maggie Walsh from Colorado, who, um, well, level 50, Zwift. That's all that needs to be said. She's an animal out there. So um, yeah, we've got some great athletes here. I'm here supporting them as best I can, and I'm really looking forward to watch the race this year, not compete. Now, one more bit of exciting Zwift news is that we now have steering within Zwift. Now, admittedly, it is only on one route. It's an off-road route, but you literally can steer yourself from one side of the road to the other as and when you want. And that is all under the new FutureWorks platform. Now, to do so, you just have to have the companion app installed and running on your phone, have your phone on your handlebar, so then it will record the accelerometer movement within that, and then have your handlebars and your wheel able to move so maybe you want to put a lazy season underneath whatever you like and yeah as and when you want just move your handlebars and that will steer you which is really exciting it's a nice addition to Zwift and it's making I guess virtual indoor cycling that little bit more real but now we've got some more exciting stuff for you because we've got a really cool collab between Physique and Fenton. Right, so here it is in all its glory. In its flesh here in Kona, the collab between Physique and Ventum. Now this has all started and evolved from the Physique Trans Zero shoe we've got on the bike here and now. We've actually seen this shoe before, a number of the pros have been riding it. It's a very nice looking shoe with some blue boa lacing running into red boa lacing. And they've used that boa design in the design on the bike, on this saddle, and on this helmet. Now this is the Ventum 1, which is Ventum's flagship triathlon bike. This is their top-end bike here. Now it's got their aero cover on the front, it's got some deep section wheels, and with Ultegra Di2. We've also got this Physique saddle, it's the Mystica saddle, it's a triathlon saddle, short nose saddle, um, and they've got that same design running on that, and then also this helmet. Now, excitingly, you can actually buy this setup. They've got two available here in Kona, the whole lot for $10,500. If you ask me, this is pretty striking. Well, now time for our cask giveaway, and cask are actually out here and just handed us these two very cool helmets. We've got the Cask Utopia and the Cask Bambino Pro Evo helmet, both in their Kona limited edition colorways, which if you ask me, are really quite cool. They're quite minimalist, subtle designs. With a little nod to Kona, we've got a turtle on the front here and Kona on the back, a little colorful line down the middle, but could be worn all year round without being too over the top Kona. So very nice um, work by them. The Utopia's a great helmet. It's uh, quite a popular option actually here for Kona because it's an aero road helmet. It's a very aerodynamic design, but plenty of ventilation to keep the head cool. So we are actually seeing quite a lot of people using that out here. The other is equally as exciting because this is the Bambino Pro Evo helmet. And we've seen these on the likes of Team Ineos and it's been de designed and developed with some of these top cyclists. But it's quite hard to come by this helmet. So really exciting that we've got one here. It's essentially the same as the Bambino. It's got the same shell, with just an ever so slightly longer tail with a rounder tip to it. With the same colorway as we saw on the Utopia, uh, it's got the removable visor, magnetic, that can switch around and attach up there. You can change that for a mirrored visor, orange visor. Uh, but yeah, super, super helmet. I actually want one of these. Uh, both of these are available in medium. That's all we've got here, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in these, you can get involved in the giveaway by going to the link in the description below this video. But now it's about time we go check back in with Fraser and see what he's getting up to. Right, thanks for that, Mark. Here I am. Ready to take Tony on. Are you good for this? Oh yeah, nice pedals and shoes, yeah, man. I thought I'd give you a head start. Oh, really? My... No, yeah. my bike doesn't have proper pedals, so Tony's got some nice shoes on. I think he's got his go fast, go fast kit. After this, we're going to go go karting, then I can take it on <laughs> you because right. this is not going to... Three, two, one, we're off. Oh, as you can see, Tony's used to the humidity, I'm not. There's not a bead of sweat on him. So Tony, 
when did you start driving? So, I was eight years old. Uh, my dad was a huge race fan. Took me to watch a Formula One race in Brazil. And where's that? So I should know. Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo, right? And then uh, I asked him for a go-kart. That was Sunday afternoon. And uh, Monday morning I had a go-kart. Really? Yeah, so. So the seed was sown? Yeah, I start on the small series. And then, uh, unfortunately, I lost my dad when I was 13. Um, I already had been a uh, three-time champion at the time. Dad had cancer and uh, he made me promise me promise him that uh, I was never gonna give up my dream and win the Indy 500 for him one day. So in 2013, when? Yeah. I made it happen. Never give up, huh? No, I mean, that's something that, you know, it's easy to say. I know people that watch the channel, uh, some of them have different goals, but most of the athletes, you know, that's the way you have to be in the sport. I think, you know, it's the easiest thing. I always used to tell myself, the easiest thing to do is give up. So tell me, when did triathlon come along? So watching you guys forever uh, but honestly since I was a little kid I uh, racing go-karts I couldn't really lift weights to be strong okay for the for the go-kart because right? you couldn't was, have extra weight yeah but no but plus at eight years old they're not gonna send you to oh, the gym yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. and make your pump yeah, yeah. and do some biceps <laughs> and triceps so I was um, swimming and obviously as a kid I always had a bicycle and then when I was 10, 11, started to run. So five years later, when I was 15, 16, I had one of my coaches that said, hey, why don't you do a, a triathlon race? You already do all the three yeah. sports. That sounds familiar. So I did it. My first triathlon ever was a 70.3, because I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> and. Uh, Back in uh, 2008, 2007, and I've been hooked ever since. Obviously, I have good partners, and I would like to was saying, um, if uh, one thing that I would love to do, I've always tried to give it back to the sport, not just racing, but I think if I can get my demographic and my fans to be passionate about triathlon as well. It's good for the sport too. So I, uh, I'm extremely lucky to have also some good partners for my triathlon career. But you know, I keep saying my racing career doesn't let me do. It keeps it keeps me not as good as I wanted to be on my triathlon career. Yeah, okay. let's go for it. Two, one. <sighs> He's gone! Ah, like really gone. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sonny. Great fun. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Yeah. Right, whilst Fraser is recovering from that, I might as well crack on with the race news. This weekend we just had two races, I'm in Barcelona and I'm in 70.3 Lanzarote, but both super exciting races. Now in I'm in Barcelona in the men's race, it was Florian Anger that took the win in an incredible time of seven hours and 45 minutes. Fred van Leerd took second place, also in an incredible time of seven hours and 53 minutes, and then third place went to Nicholas Castelline. In the women's race, it was Sarah Svenx that took the win, Laura Zimmerman took second, and then Katrin Avustov took third. Over in Ironman 70.3 Lanzarote, they actually cancelled the swim and made it just a bike run with a short 300 meter run before the bike, just to split the field up a little bit as they ran to their bags. But I did see some video footage of the men running to transition and it looked carnage. And in the men's race, it was Frederick Funk that took the win and an incredible performance by him. Second place went to Peter Hemerick and then third place went to Kenneth van der Rijske. And then in the women's race, it's Emma Pallant that, well, kind of dominated a little bit in that race. Very impressive, 4.08 for that. 
Alexandra Tundur took second place and then Jean Colomb took third. Right, well now time for us to take a look through some of your photos. How was that? I'm back. That was hard. Look at me, I'm sweating. Not a bead of, not a bead of sweat in Tony. He was just <laughs> the humidity from, from Miami. Well, I need your help to take a look through some of these photos. What have we got? I think you're going to enjoy them anyway. Yeah. Uh, so Ramir has sent in his no, track speed concept. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old speed yeah, track speed concept. I love my one of them as um, well though. But they haven't changed massively, have no, they, anyway? No, the frame design still looks pretty recognisable to that. Yeah, yeah really like. cool. Uh, so this is from North Carolina in America and just did a practice race for a lead up to my first 70.3 in luck. October on a very big screen was just in front of him. Um, now That's we've awesome. also got Stuart here sent in his giant Trinity. And check out this oh garage. Oh my word, he's got a, a, a complete what, um, he's got a complete, Weight rack is the phrase I'm trying to get. He's got the squat. It's quite cage. hard that bike work. I know. I'm exhausted. Um, park tool or some sort of um, mechanics. mechanics. Yeah, yeah. In the background. But he said he's just finished his conversion, ready for a winter of what? He's got plenty of good toys in there. Yeah, but yeah, very nice. Next one from Santiago, and this is his oh, bike wow, setup in transition. Yeah. Atlantic oh no 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 no! He's no, not sorry. from Santiago. That's what I am. This is Atlantic City in New Jersey. It's as if felt AI4 um, ready before the battle. Stealth black. Yeah, that is a pretty stealthy, not neat bike, isn't it? Final one here is from Argo, and this is from Narva, Narva near the border of Estonia and Russia. That's an interesting one. Yeah. But check out the photo, it looks pretty atmospheric. Apparently he's on a 63 kilometer back and forth track that took the participants on challenging terrain at the side of a buckwheat field, straight through the meadows, bursting in nettle bushes, Estonian forest, the Gulf of oh. Finland, blah, blah, blah. blah. It incredible. sounds absolutely epic. Yeah, he sent through a number of other photos, but whew, that that's sounds, a good one. Yeah, that's really cool. Never I think been we need to Estonia or Russia. Maybe it's one for the bucket list for us, eh? Hey? Um, but now on to our caption competition. Now, last week we had quite a funny photo between uh, Sebastian Keenley and Javier Gomez before. Yeah, I ran yeah. away. Yeah. Now we had some great captions coming in. Uh, the first one from Jonas Allure said, oh, better get some air in the chest, a bit like Sebi. Yeah, we've got Neil Deshmuk, Desh sorry, I've got your pronunciation all wrong there, but from Neil, he says, let's meet a T2 and run together just like 70.3 world champs. <laughs> uh, Thomas K said, hey, Seb, ouch, could you please let me go? Those Germans have very strong handshakes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, it's good. But we've got Jonathan Breams here who says, why doesn't he realize that he is gripping my hand too hard? on the same train, but I thought that one was Good brilliant. One. Nice one. Um, yeah, so you are the winner. Do get in touch and we'll send you your GTN cap straight away. But now for this week's caption comp photo, and it it's is- you and me. Well, I'm having a great time out here. Yeah. Uh, so maybe yeah. maybe not as much air as I'd like to have got, but try them. <laughs> Brilliant. But please do drop your captions in the comment section below. Right, that takes us to the end of another, for me at least, sweaty show here in Hawaii. But do keep tuning in because we've got some great content coming up for the rest of this week. We've got a tech tour from Kona and we've got a video all about the cool pro tech that you can see here. Also have a video on what it takes to win the Ironman mm -hmm. World Championships. Quite an interesting Good one. one. Now, if you have enjoyed today's video, please do hit that thumbs up button and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on the globe. Don't forget to head on mm -hmm. over to our shop if you'd like to get hold of some of our GTN Kona Edition t-shirts. And if you'd like to see Tim Reed's Pro Bike, you can see that by clicking just down here. And if you want to see a little bit more about this course here in Hawaii, well, we did a video about what we think are the toughest parts of it, and that video is here.